Uh, yeah, hi, uh, good, uh, what is it, afternoon? I guess I don't even know anymore. Good afternoon, welcome to another episode of Crime Pays with Bodney Dozen. It's 95 degrees, I'm in South Texas, right along the borderland, sweat my ass off here in Zapata County to show you a plant that just got listed as federally endangered. Now, if you're a landowner, no reason to worry. This doesn't mean the government can come take your land because Texas doesn't give a shit about many of its endangered plants. That said, I want to give a nice money shot of what the flowers look like just so that anyone out there can know more about this very rare and very fucking cool species of milkweed. This is the prostrate milkweed, Asclepius prostrata. And there we go. There's those flowers right there. You can see they're just about to be on their way out. Some of those, they're frying in the sun. But you also got them buds right there that are uh, just maturing. Okay? So uh, those those petals will be opening uh, right on, on this guy right there. And those uh, flowers will be breaking on. A typical milkweed morphology, uh, we got those five hoods. And then we got those five horns. You know, I was eating flaming Hot Cheetos. I hope that doesn't ruin the... Uh, you know, the integrity of this, uh, this short film right here, but be that as it may. That, mind you, they were the baked hot Cheetos, the baked flaming Hots, you know, because I try to be a little health conscious when I'm on the road and sitting down so much. Look at those ants. I think I'm pissing them off. Anyway, we got the five hoods that look like those little teeth right there. We got the five horns coming out of them. And then we got the stigmatic slit right there in between those five hoods, uh, as you can see. So that's where you know, a wasp or some sort of rather large pollinator needs to come in and uh, slip their leg in that little trap door, come out with a uh, one of the pollinia in it, which look like little boomerangs, and uh, and then transfer it to the stigmatic slit of another flower. So this thing's going off. Banger plant right here, all right? Real nice, real impressive plant. Look at those beautiful anthocyanin pigments giving a purple tinge to that new foliage of those leaves. And also look at the undulating leaf margins right there. Which, uh, of course, uh, you know, in my opinion, my my uh, semi half ass professional opinion, give the leaves, uh, you know, they break up the surface area so you're not just getting so much surface area exposed to the sun, uh, you know. So you get an undulate margin instead of uh, just one flat surface. It just gets beaten down with all those infrared and ultraviolet uh, rays. Anyway, now, of course, we got a tuber about six inches in the ground right there. Uh, those tubers can... Uh, They'll produce offset tubers, etc. So this thing is adapted to growing in the very hot, very dry, extreme climate of deep south Texas. An underappreciated habitat, if there ever was one. But that's why we're making videos like this, to make sure it gets a little bit more recognition. All right? It deserves much more than it's currently getting. Oh, this is a cool one. Erythrostem and caudatum. Used to be Cesalpinia. Look at that, Fabaceae pea family. Look at those leaves though, look at those little leaflets. All right, almost shovel shaped. Okay, almost spade shaped. All right, kind of looking like concertina wire. Glaucus, blue, and uh, this is really cool too. Look at the fruits on this. Look at the glands. You like the glands, see the glands? Look at that, holy hell. This is a great plant, another uh, dry limb plant. Probably got a tuber in the ground. Never dug one up for an herbarium voucher, so I can't, uh, I can't, uh, you know, validate that. Maybe you have to check uh, SciNet, S-E-I-Net, SouthwestBiodiversity.org, see if they got uh, pictures of any uh, herbarium collections on there. Oh, look, somebody laid some eggs on this one. How about that? Again, you got those 10 stamens, nine fused together, one separate, and then there's that style with the red tip poking out. That'll mature into uh, one of those uh, bean pod fruits, those little, little flat legumes. Look at that. Banger plant right there. Doesn't get taller than maybe two feet max, but really, uh, really, really uh, adapted to this uh, this brutal. You gotta respect anything that grows here, man. Everything's got a gimmick. Everything's been through uh, evolutionary selection for this hot, dry environment. Ooh, and it smells like hell. The oily resin left on the oily resin left on my fingers. That residue smells pretty bad. Very chemical and very nasty. You can see you got the black felt back there because I need a nice black background when I get the the, uh, the money shots, okay? So I can get my uh, morphology money shots of those weird-ass flowers. Beautiful, look at that. Almost just like a Hoffman Segia. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Look how big that guy is. Look at that. That's all coming from one tuber. Okay, so these things will go dormant sometimes for two years. You won't see these for two, three years, but they're still down there. The tuber's still down there. They just, they're so well adapted. To, uh, you know, growing in this hot, dry climate, they got a they got a dormancy strategy. All right, all right. So developing a tuber and uh, going going drought dormant is something that a lot of different plants 
in its climate do. All right, whether they're, you know, there's, there's even cacti. There's species of cactus that develop a tuber in the ground, little potato-like tuber, all right, so that they could just take five months of 105 degree temperatures with no rain, easy, okay? That's what evolution does. It selects for certain traits, uh, you know, just like a filter. And everything that uh, evolves those traits, mutates those traits, has the alleles that code for those traits, whatever, is able to make it through the filter. Everything that's not able to uh, doesn't make it through the filter, all right? Good lesson for humans there, okay? We keep shitting where we eat and fucking the landscape into a coma. We're not going to make it through the filter. We will for a while. There'll be a long era of protracted suffering through which, you know, we dupe ourselves into thinking people like Elon Musk are going to save us. But eventually, we're not going to make it through the filter. If we keep destroying the living world around us. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. That said, look at this fucking milkweed. This thing is impressive as hell. And let's look at the uh, all the little hairs. Look at the nice little indumenta in the hairs on the stem. You got those opposite leaves, which all milkweeds have. There might be one species that doesn't, but I think all of them do. And of course, were I to break one of those leaves, it would bleed white latex. Okay, but this, since this is federally listed now, you know, it uh, it would I would also be illegal for me to intentionally pull a leaf off. But um, no, would I do it? There's a developing inflorescence right there. You can see that thing's gonna flower soon. Look at that, so impressive. This is gonna be grown in cultivation more. I know people that collected seed before uh, this was fairly listed endangered. And my dream is that one day you'll be able to purchase this in native plant nursery. So if you get if you get people who are really into preserving native plants as a form of ex situ conservation in a yard after they kill their grotesque and hideous lawn, which is wrong on so many levels, especially the ideological ones, they'll be able to plant uh, species of uh, prostrate milkweed in their yard. So all you got to do is get a couple stock plants established in a nursery somewhere in the ground at someone's house, whatever, and then you can get seed off of it. Now, what are some threats to this species? Well, there's quite a few. Uh, one is uh, invasive buffalo grass, which, uh, as you could see, is uh, right over there, all right? It's been in the valley for about, I don't know, 40, 50 years, but it's really spread the last 20 to the point that it's overtaken and smothered much of the habitat here, causing a steep decline in plant biodiversity, as well as reptile diversity. You get some really cool collared lizards uh, here, they look like they look like freaking iguanas. They're so big, and they've lost a lot of habitat because the the buffalo grass just smothers everything. It's still actively being seeded here uh, by ranchers uh, who don't know uh, how bad it is for the ecology down here. All right. And of course, you got to care about the ecology. It doesn't make you a a quote tree hugging liberal. It just means you've got a, a you know a greater perspective for the land that you live on, as well as a greater connection to it. This shouldn't be a political issue. Okay. It really shouldn't. It's pretty shit for brain that it's been turned into that in this country. Caring about the land you live on and knowing the plant species that grow there, why what's native is important, why what's invasive is important, having a context for evolution and ecology, that shouldn't be a political thing. But uh, of course, America is as shit for brain as it is these days and is highly divided. If It's of course made it a political thing. Anyway, there's those leaves, there's those uh, flowers. You can see the petals reflects down and uh, those flowers are just, God, they smell incredible, too. They're just nectar buffets. B all right, big wasps, those tarantula hawk wasps are common pollinators of it. You know, those wasps that parasitize, they lay their eggs in the body of a tarantula, okay? Another big threat to this uh, plant is just good old-fashioned habitat clearance, okay? Not having respect for the land, not seeing why it's important to keep it around. A lot of habitat clearance uh, going on as the quote-unquote human tumor spreads, okay? Which, again, we don't need to be like this. As a species, we just, uh, you know, you could change, but uh, currently we are like that, all right? Our society just doesn't respect anything that innately uh, benefits us, at least in the short term. All these things benefit us in the long term, but we, we haven't figured that out yet. We develop more of this uh, bland and bleak uh, consumer, you know, drive everywhere landscape. Uh, but, uh, you know, even with that type of landscape, though, you could still preserve native plants even though it's also, you know, the type of landscape is also causing you diabetes, heart disease, obesity, etc. You could still preserve this stuff. So luckily some people have uh, started to do that and they collected seed before it was listed as federally, in, federally endangered because now it's illegal to. And, uh, and uh, they've been growing this out. So there's hope for this plant yet. Oh, that's a nice verbena too. There's a lot of, there's a lot of boring verbenas out there. Okay, especially in the genus Glandularia. But this one's not too bad. That's a showy bastard. Look at how big those landing pad petals are for the bees that pollinate these guys. Love doing pollination studies. I'd love to see what pollinates half this stuff, you know? Just gives you a reason to lurk, 
All right, might make the landowners nervous nearby, but they're always fun to talk to. You know, you talk to them, tell them what you're doing. You know, especially me, because I don't think they expect someone like me to be looking at plants like this. You know, nerding out like this. All right, which is uh, <laughs> can make for some funny interactions. Look at that. There's prostrata right there. See that prostrata right there, right there. Just the, the plant that was just finally. But you can see this invasive grass can really. Uh, take over see now, luckily they mow here so it keeps the grass down but uh god if they didn't mow it'd really be smothered oh it smells incredible god it smells so good so sugary and sweet those flowers we just talked to the landowner nearby really nice guy really kind guy was really curious what we're doing talked to him for a while and uh you know he's been here 72 years had no clue this thing even was out here which is not surprising most people don't pay attention to this stuff Again, that thing smells incredible. All milkweed flowers smell incredible. Fucking bangers. Fucking bangers.com. Oh, yeah, look at this guy. Swallowtail caterpillar. That's a pretty badass butterfly that guy's going to mature into. And there's his host plant right there, Aristolochia erecta, which has a really cool looking flower on it. But it uh, doesn't appear to be blooming right now. But easy to. Oh, there, there's one. Not open yet. Pollinated by fungus gnats. Got a really cool uh, purple opening to that uh, that Corolla. And of course the fungus gnats crawl inside that thing, get trapped, pollinate it. And uh, the, pollin the pollinators are tiny. But uh, that guy of course is bioaccumulating all that aristolochic acid, which is uh, somewhat toxic. Uh, so that if uh, any birds come to eat them, they immediately barf and remember not to eat any more uh, swallowtail caterpillars. Oh, yeah, there's another one right there. Look at that. See, there we go. There's that Aristolochia erectus. See, I told you the flowers are pretty wild looking. Look at that. Look into my perianth. Holy hell. Look at all that speckling and mottling. Got to get some fungus gnats in there. And that's what the fruit looks like. Basically, just imagine that Corolla is gone and you just got the that ovary down there. That swollen ovary. Banger of a plant. Very important for those, uh, those swallowtails. Look at that. See those guys? Almost looks like a centipede. It's thought that's what they do. It's thought with those long ass antenna, they're mimicking Scolopendra centipedes, of which of course peck a very powerful sting. Right, but this guy's just, look, he's just hanging out, just lurking, right? He's on he's on a piece of grass though. He's not on the, uh, he's not even on the, uh, the damn host plant he's looking for, which of course is down there. Look at that, we got this beautiful flax everywhere too. Linum is the genus, the true genus of uh, flax. So when you, get, when you eat like a flax seed, you know, you put it in your smoothie to clean your colon or whatever the shit. That's coming from a species in the genus Linum. This is the same genus. All right. Look at the inside of that uh, flower too. Look at that beautiful patterning. Five stamens. And uh, of course you got, looks like a, a five lobed stigma in the center as well. And then there's that uh, ovary at the base. See the little green ovary right down there? A little too bright. Anyway, here we got another species of milkweed. This is Asclepius onotheroides. Look at it. Look at those long peduncles on each flower. You got the uh, whole inflorescence coming out uh, right out the uh, axle right there. Right uh, by where the leaves are. Where the leaves come out. See those opposite leaves? Again, you got that semi-undulate margin. Look how linear that leaf is. See that? See how linear and elongated that leaf is? All right. Another cool milkweed species underappreciated. I don't know why people, more people don't grow these things. I, they can be really easy to grow once they get going. They just need the full sun. And of course, I believe uh, most of them form that uh, tuberous root. They got a perennial root. So the, the above ground veg will die back and then the root stays alive and they just re sprout. All right, Asclepius prostrata, of course, takes that to an extreme because it'll lay dormant for months, uh, for years sometimes. But uh, most of the milkweeds uh, are not like that. They'll come back. Look at that. And look at those elongated, very elongated hoods see that those yellow hoods with the tiny horns coming out of them as well banger of a plant all right always love seeing these these native milkies and they, all the flowers on these guys tend to smell very good oh look at that that's another banger it doesn't look like much unless you don't know unless you know what it is you know if you don't know what it is it don't look like nothing a chrysanthes longiflora look at those flowers all right they're going to open in about six hours once dusk sets in it starts to get dark well, actually, I've lost track of time. I don't know how long we've been out here sweating on 95 degrees sun, but pollinated by moths. Holy shit. Great strategy right there. Open your flowers at night so they don't dry out so easy in this hot sun. Eclysanthes longiflora, bougainvillea, family nectaginaceae. Look at all those freaking flowers, man. 
be opening like little white tubes for the long, the long, uh, the long proboscis of the moths. Look at this Ferencia. Look at those leaves. So lacy. Ooh. It's Ferencia pedatifida. You know, with the yellow flowers on her. My colleague tells me they're normally uh, more orange than this, but I've only seen this species once before, so. Look at that, forming a nice little clump. Again, again, a herbaceous perennial. All this stuff can die back. It can just die back to that root during the dry season. See, there's the fruit on that Sphorelsia. See that? An over, a multi loculed ovary enclosed in those five sepals, that five sepaled calyx, that uh, very distinct foliage. Here we go, also hiding in Cremaria ramesissima, one of the coolest and most underappreciated genera uh, in the agave family. This is Manfredo, this is Manfredo longiflora. See that, see just hiding out. Not much to look at here, pretty sun stressed. Get some water, it takes off. In cultivation, it takes off. So the thing to do again is just, someone's gotta be monitoring this, okay? After a good rain especially, come out, when it flowers, no one it flowers, collect seed. Boom, you get more of these. We gotta preserve these ex situ populations. Don't come out here and dig these ones, but but get seed, preserve these, okay, ex situ, get them in gardens, get them in botanic gardens down here. Make sure this stuff is protected because the habitat is not, all right? This this piece of property is gonna go up for sale soon. It'll be gone. Person who buys it, sure enough, isn't gonna give a shit, all right? Once you buy the land, you own all the all the animals and plants on it, and uh, you know, they'll just uh, they'll destroy it. Damn, look at that, look at that, just hiding out. You'd never see it if you didn't know it was here. It's such a cool plant, and it'll do so well in cultivation. All right, most of the manfredas do. They hybridize them with the gaves and make those man gaves, which some people have different opinions about. I think they're not that bad, but some people really hate them. See that, looking like a little starfish. See it? Look at that, with those, look at it, look at the patterns on the leaves too. Teeth on the leaves, and then you got that uh, beautiful red speckling. Ah! Phenology on these guys is they bloom late summer. But they also hybridize with other uh, other species of manfreda pretty easily. So if the phenology gets mixed up, you get one that uh, is an outlier, blooms a little early, you get a potential hybrid. And again, someone was trying to lump agave in with manfreda despite the obvious differences. They're close, but you know I'm not buying it. Look at it. You get Escobaria emscoteriana. All right, easily confused with Mammillaria prolifera, which is uh, somewhat common, but much more softer. It's also got the tubercles with all the spines on it. Both are pretty cool species. And uh, you got the uh, Mammillaria hyderi hanging out right there, forming little uh, little mounded rosettes. Mammillaria hyderi as well, not doing so well. Populations are declining. It used to be a lot more abundant. I remember first time I came down here in 2014, they were everywhere. But uh, feral pigs, really, they uproot them looking for grubs or something and then just leave them to die. Don't even eat the things. Man, that Escobar is everywhere. Kind of serious pitchy eye. And uh, look at that, you got those Eocene oyster fossils, those Eocene bivalve fossils. Just so abundant down here in South Texas. Look at this, what do these guys do? Look at that, he's just posted up in there. He's just marinating in there. You gotta come out at some point. You like Opuntia lindheimeri? Look at all those, look at all those stamens. Thigmonastic stamens. Closing in on his ass, look at that, he just posted up. How long are you gonna hang out in there? He must be, he's probably eating pollen, I guess. Anyway, there you go. Amazing how much diversity there can be in just on a dry and dusty roadside. A hot, dry, and dusty roadside. How nice them, them, uh, them Nosma Texensis. Look at it. Them Nosma Texana with the little ass fruits. It smells incredible. Citrus family Rutaceae. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Have a good rest of your afternoon. Go fuck yourself. Bye.